Let us give God a hand of praise. Amen, 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 amen. Um, let us, why don't we do this? We have a listening audience. We have people who are live stream on tonight. Let's give our live stream audience. Amen. Hey, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It is a blessing and it is a privilege to be here on this evening. I thank God for President Adrian Spees. Let the church say amen. Thank God for her. I want to thank God, amen, for our visiting president. Amen. We want to thank God for Sister Sandra. Would you please stand, Sister Sandra Renee Chambers? And Sister Adrian, would you just stand? We'd like to see two sons shine at the same time. Amen. All right, all right. We thank God for you. It is uh, wonderful to see the officers. Can we see the officers of the Carolina region? Can you all just stand Women's Missionary Society? Amen, amen, amen. It's, it's all about leadership. I know that I'm here to preach and that um, I don't have to take all of this extra time. Some people will say it doesn't take all of that, but if all of that weren't in the soup, there would be no soup on tonight. Somebody needs to say amen. And so sometimes it does take all of that. Amen. Uh, I want to praise God this evening for this wonderful choir who has just been leading us. Amen. See, I wanted to join the choir, but there's no extra seats up there. Amen. They take up the whole choir stand. Amen. Give them another hand. Give them another hand. I think that's I think that's absolutely awesome. Amen. I think that's absolutely awesome. Uh, we want to thank God for this very wonderful host pastor. Amen. And this very wonderful host church. Amen. Host pastor white, dressed in white. Amen. And this wonderful church, YMT, cool name. Amen. Young Missionary Temple. Amen. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. Our host presiding elder. Amen. Elder Harris. Amen. Our worship leader. Amen. Amen. Our chief shouter in, amen, in residence. Amen. And if you can't get happy, don't expect anybody else to get happy. Amen. 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 And we want to thank God for presiding Elder Cassandra Keys of the Winston-Salem. Amen. 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 I praise God for you. Uh, tonight, I also am thankful for, it is great we have our officers, but then there are officers to be. Amen. There are officers in the making. Amen. And we are praying for Sister Faye Crowder Phillips. Amen. Amen. Stand up, Sister Faye. Amen. Who is offering herself for the Women's Missionary Council Vice President. And we thank God for her. We thank God for her on tonight. We also want to remember this evening. I'm glad we're being live streamed. We want to remember our president, amen, in prayer, because as she plans and works toward a quadrennial, amen, we know that it is more than a notion. So we lift up a Dr. Princess Ann Rogers Pegues on tonight, amen. And I was just in conversation via text message uh, with the uh, son of, of Dr. Sylvia Falk. We want to be in prayer for her on this evening. Health challenges, but God is good. Amen. Hey, praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Uh, I also am thankful. I see pastors who uh, have probably about 15 other things that they ought to be doing. Amen. Uh, but they're here on this evening. 
would you all mind, along with your spouses, if they're here, just standing so we can just recognize you on this evening. We thank God for our pastors, our ministers, as well as our ministers' spouses. Amen. Give them a hand. Amen. 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 All right. Well, there's only so much grace in one space. Amen. So I'm going to move on on this evening. But some of these pastors are new. Amen. A couple of them are very new. Amen. They're new to us. Amen. So why don't you stand? You know who you are. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have behind me Reverend Dr. Valerie Everett. Amen. At St. John CME Church in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Amen. And to my right, we have um, uh, Jerry, Reverend Jerry Christian Jr., a man who is at Russell Memorial CME in the Bull City of Durham. Amen. Amen. We're glad to have them on our team, and they, they make excellent additions. Isn't that right? Well, we've come through Florence. Amen. And we're getting through Michael. Amen. <laughs> So I see why we're shouting on the night. Amen. Because the Lord has brought us from a mighty long ways. But we still have something to shout about and we still have much to be thankful for. Now, if I've forgotten to recognize anybody on this evening, you just charge it to my head and somebody will let me know. Amen. Before I leave. Amen. And I will be able to call your name out. Amen. But right now, I'm going to ask that you would pray with me and let us move on with the word. Would you bow in prayer? Lord, we ask this evening in simple form that the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart would be acceptable unto thee and in thy sight. In Christ our Redeemer's name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. All right. On this, the occasion of the installation of our officers, um, we come before you with a homily, amen, from the book of Esther. Amen. From the book of Esther. You all know about Sister Esther, right? Amen. You know about Sister Esther. Well, uh, turn with me, if you will, to the fifth chapter of the book of Esther. Amen. The fifth chapter of the book of Esther. And we're going to begin reading with verse 5. Esther, ch verse 1. Esther 5, verse 1. Amen. Uh, a book of poetry. Amen. Found in the Old Testament. Amen. You all know I love to preach from the Old Testament. And um, this book is, is, is really one of the most, I think, special books in the Bible. Amen? It is the very last book to be accepted into the canon. In the canon of the Old Testament, this is the last book to be added. Amen? Amen. Esther 5, um, verse 1. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes, and she stood in the inner court of the king's palace, in front of the king's quarters, while the king was sitting on his royal throne, inside the throne room, opposite the entrance to the palace. And when the king saw Esther, Standing in the court, she won favor in his sight. And the brother held out his hand, amen, <laughs> held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. And the fellow said to her, the king said to her, girl, amen. <laughs> he said, sister, no, it doesn't say that. He said, 
He said, what is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given you even the half of my kingdom. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you all a little bit this evening. I'm going to try not to keep you a long time. Amen. Not going to say that I'm not. I said I'm going to try not. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to give it my best. Amen. But I want to talk to you all for a little while on the subject, learning how to win again. Amen. Learning how to win again. Amen? Amen? Learning how to win again. Um, this text is an ambitious text. It really is. Because this text, if you read the book of Esther, um, many people uh, call it um, the material. They, they liken it unto a comedy. Amen? Um, um, uh, because what Esther does, Esther has the ups and the downs almost of slapstick, amen, um, uh, because it has a way of making a fool out of those who are in power, <laughs> amen, and it shows the weak side of folk who think that they are strong, <laughs> and it shows the strong side of folk who appear to be weak. Is there anybody in the congregation who's feeling me just a little bit on this evening? I want to talk about learning how to win again. I call this text ambitious because this text portrays Esther, a man, a young woman, a man, really, in some instances, a girl, a man uh, uh, who really has a way of overcoming the entire kingdom of Persia, stretching from India all the way to Ethiopia, containing 27 million people. And against this 27 million throng, a man of folk in the Persian empire, stands a little girl named Esther. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, uh, I call it an ambitious text because at the time of the writing of the text, Israel has done nothing but lose. Amen? For, for at least a century, Israel has been in diaspora. Israel has been in exile. Amen? So folks, mamas, mamas, mama. Amen? <laughs> know nothing but what it means to be in exile. They don't, they don't know what it means to have an Israelite king sit on the throne. They don't know what it means to have a President Obama in the White House. Amen. Aren't y'all thankful? You know what that means. Amen. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? But, but prior to Esther, amen, at the time of Esther, they had no concept of what it was like to have a standing army in the nation of Israel because Israel was a vassal and a conquered people, amen? But here they are, amen, thumbing their nose at the elites. That's why it's an ambitious text, amen, because the brother, the king in the text uh, called Ahasuerus, amen, in our King James Bible, amen, uh, called Xerxes, because that's his historical name, is Xerxes, amen, and called Ahasveros, amen, in Hebrew. And the interesting thing about even the name, they won't call him his real name. Name is Xerxes, amen, but they won't call him Xerxes. They call him Ahasuerus, amen. <laughs> and I don't know if you, some, some of the rabbis uh, that I was reading and, 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 and trying to get a feel for the text said, if you really uh, want to know how they felt about folk in power, play with the name Ahasuerus, uh, amen? And they said, if you, if you sneeze, amen, uh, uh, his name sounds like Ahasuerus, uh, uh, amen? Amen, it's, 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 it's almost a sneeze, amen? And, and, and so there is a, uh, uh, some people do that, 
even now. Some people won't call certain folk by their name. They call them by their number. Amen. Amen. You said that went over somebody's head. Amen. Some, some folk will refer to people as 40, 45, 45. Amen. Won't even call the name. And, and that's a way of thumbing your nose. Amen. At people who are so called in power and letting them know that even though we aren't winning right now. Amen. We're trying to learn how to win again. Amen. I thought this was an important message to speak to you about because in some of our congregations and in some of our situations, we've been losing for a long time. Amen. We've been going to funeral after funeral after funeral and haven't seen a baptism in a long, long time. Y'all go on and admit it and be honest and say amen. Amen. We've been watching the pews get emptier and emptier. We've been watching the budget get harder and harder to raise. Amen. We've been watching the pastors sometimes be harder and more difficult to get along with. And pastors have been watching congregations do the same. And and, and we've gotten, amen, every now and then to a customer to losing that we we forget amen and we need to relearn what it means to win again amen i i i had a cousin uh who who, who was uh, a, a great coach in oklahoma and 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 he won two state championships and and he took this boys basketball team from this little town called Bowley, Oklahoma and, and, and beat all of the contenders in the entire state. And every now and then we would watch him and every now and then we'd talk about some of his techniques. And one of his techniques was if he coaches fellas up and they go out and make mistakes and he'd bring them back into a huddle and coach them up again and they go out and make a mistake. He'd call them in again and he'd look them in the eye and he'd say, fellas? And they would say, yes, coach, yes, coach. He would say, since you won't listen to me, let me just say this to you. Go out and do something different. Amen? Every now and then, the church, in order to win again, needs to just go out and do something different. Stop doing the same old thing. Is anybody hearing me? Am I in the house on this evening? Amen. 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 All right. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm going to start off by, 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 by saying that the first key to learning to win again is knowing how to come from behind. Amen. You got to know how to come from behind. Some of us are good at winning as long as we are ahead. Some of us really know how to praise the Lord as long as the church is full. Amen. But when there's only one or two people present, amen, we are as quiet as a church mouse. Somebody say amen. But learning how to win again requires us to learn how to come from behind. One of the best examples I know of this is a brother named Chris Harris. He's a brother who plays for the Denver Broncos. Chris Harris, and I know there ain't many love, there's not much love for the Denver Broncos in this house tonight. But I'm talking to you about Chris Harris because Chris Harris is a young adult who is a CME. Amen. Got a little love for him now, right? Amen. He's a young adult who loves this church. He's, he's, he's from Snake. His church is in Snake Creek, Oklahoma. Amen. 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 And old Chris loves his church. And he and I were talking about his football career. And Chris told me when I started out, he said, I was the last person taken in the draft. Amen. Not taken in the draft. I was the last person put on, the foot, on a football team period, in the NFL. I was the last person that was chosen. Amen? Didn't get drafted. But after not being drafted, when they picked everybody else, he was the last person chosen. He said, so when I stood on the sidelines, I knew that they wanted everybody else there more than they wanted me. Are y'all with me on this evening? But Chris said, but I believe in God. Amen. I, I, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. And Chris said, I wouldn't let it get me down. Said, I told my church in Snake Creek, Oklahoma, y'all pray for me now. Amen. He said, and all I want y'all to do is just pray that the Lord lets me get on the field. Amen. And then Chris promised the Lord. He said, Lord, if you let me get on the field just one time, amen, not twice, not three times, but let me get on that field, Lord, one time. And 
Chris said, I promise you, if you let me get on once, I'll never come off. Amen. Well, well, what I want to tell you about old Chris Harris is that I was reading in Sports Illustrated the other day. And it said, Chris Harris, amen, number 25, cornerback for the Denver Broncos. One, amen, of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. Amen. Went on to talk about old Chris Harris. Said Chris Harris never had a touch. He went for a streak of 15 months when nobody could score a touchdown on him. For a whole year and a half, nobody scored a touchdown on Chris Harris. He went from being the last man drafted to a contract, last one I read, of $42 million. You got to learn how to come from behind. When I read, when I read about Queen Esther in our text, we call her Queen Esther, amen, but she had only been queen for about five years, and before she was queen, she was known as Little Orphan Esther, amen. She was known as Hadassah, the foster child. She was known as the girl whose mother and father died because they didn't have health care. She was known as the little girl who didn't have much of a chance. They looked at her and looked at her with those eyes of pity. Do y'all know what that feels like when somebody looks at you and they look at you and their look tells you that they don't believe that you'll ever amount to anything? Well, Esther was from the wrong side of the tracks. Esther was not the person that you would choose to be the most successful in the class. Esther was not the little girl who had the best dress because when Esther was a little girl, her mother and her father were sick and eventually they died. Nobody held out hope for Esther. Esther was a throwaway child in a society that figured that little girls were expendable because in Esther's day, nobody cared about a little girl. But here was a little girl, even though she looked like a nobody, God let her know that you're a somebody. Even though society said, you won't make it, little girl, that little girl said, I'm an orphan on the outside, but I'm a queen on the inside. I'm a foster child on the outside, but I'm a CEO on the inside. Esther knew that she could come from behind. And so here that baby is. Amen. Here she is, an orphan competing against the elites. Amen. In Persia. Here she is competing against millions of young girls who are raised from families from the right side of the track. All of them got the right dresses. All of them have the right hairstyle. All of them have the right jewelry. All of them have the right makeup. But Esther says, I got something that you all don't have. I know how to come from behind. Amen. Esther says, your hardest day, I can see her looking at some of them little girls saying, your hardest day was the day when you had a hangnail. But my hardest day was when I lost my mama, lost my father. I've been through something. I know what it means to come from behind. Esther could say with, with Aretha Franklin, let me see what Aretha would say when I was in the lost and found. Mordecai came and claimed me. Esther knew what it meant. Come from behind. Now, now I'm, 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 I'm just about through. I'm pretty, pretty much through. Learning how to win again. So, the next thing that I see in this text, you want to learn how to win again? You have to learn how to raise your game. <laughs> Winners have to be at their best when the situation is at its worst. <laughs> Amen. Winners can't look at a bad situation. And then say, man, I mean, I, can you imagine Kevin Durant 
Amen. Can you imagine if you, you know them, Steph Curry, can, 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 can you imagine Cam Newton when the game gets rough and, and the other team is outscoring you and you see old Cam sitting on the bench saying, man, I ain't going out there. It doesn't look like we can win this thing. No, no, Cam is the guy. If you're going to be a winner, Cam is the guy who says it might look bad. Amen. But, 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 but then this thing is that it's worse. Amen. Cam says that's, that's when I can be at his best. You go on down that field and some kind of way I'll find you. Amen. Get open and I'll throw the ball to you. Just get open and I can do it because when, when, when you're a winner, when the situation is at its worst, you're at your best. So I said, now where is that in this text? Then I read Esther chapter 2. Verse 9, talked about Esther meeting the king's eunuch. And it said this, it said when she and the eunuch got together, it said Esther won favor. (laughs) Are y'all hearing me? (laughs) From the eunuch. Amen. And I said, hmm, that's interesting. So I kept reading, read thing over and over again, and then it popped out again. Not only in two chapter nine, chapter two, verse nine, but in chapter two, verse fifteen, it tells us that when Esther first met the queen, the king, when she first met him, it said Esther won the favor of the king. All right, that's two times, and I kept on reading. Amen. And 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 chapter two, uh, verse seventeen, when. When, 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 in 15, that is, when she met, amen, the people of the court, it says that everyone who saw her, she won their favor. And then 217, when she met the king, she won his favor. Amen. And that's how she became queen. She won his favor. Now, let me see if I can help you with this, because I see you getting quiet and you're saying, where are you going? Amen. Where are you going? Hurry up and get there. Make the turn. Let's see if I can do it. Amen. In Genesis chapter six, amen, verse verse eight, it says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Esther won favor. But Noah found grace. Amen. It's, it's almost like Noah was walking. Amen. And then he, he, he bumped. Amen. It's, it's, it's almost like, like Noah was walking and he tripped over, over grace. Amen. <laughs> he wasn't looking for it. Amen. He wasn't looking for it. He didn't expect to, 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 to run into grace, but he, he just found it. And, and when it talks about Joseph, Joseph is talking to folk and he said, if I find favor in your sight. Amen. That's almost like Joseph saying, amen, I bumped into favor one day. Amen. When, when, when Moses talks about in Exodus, amen, Moses said, Lord, if I find favor in your sight. Amen. Now, now here's what I want to say to you. Here's what I want to say to you. There's a difference between finding favor and winning favor. Because, see, a lot of us think Esther was just pretty. Esther was just cute. Esther was just, amen, fine. She had the right shape. Amen. She had the right hairdo. She had the right makeup. But that's not what the text says. The text says she found favor. And when I looked up the word, amen, to find favor, what that word means is that, 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 that favor is lifted. Amen. And then favor is taken. And then favor is carried. And that word has to do with somebody doing the lifting, somebody doing the taking, and then somebody doing the carrying. So what it's saying about Esther is it's saying that Esther wasn't just some pretty little girl who came along, but what it's saying was that Esther was a person who knew how to plan. She knew how to strategize. She knew how to initiate. Amen. She knew how to engage. That means that Esther, while everybody else walked in the room, amen, posing and and posing Poison for a hatcheress. Esther said, no, this thing has to have some strategy. Amen. She, 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 she told the eunuch, she said, I'll tell you what to do. All those other girls are fried, died, and laid to the side. Give me an afro. Amen. And when I walk in, and when I walk in, I'm going to blow his mind. Amen. Are y'all with me this, this evening? And, and, and in that scripture, 
where we read in chapter 5, verse 1 and following, where Esther before had said, if I perish, let me perish. I'm going to see the king. It said when Esther walked in that courtyard, amen, when Esther stepped on that court, it said Esther found, she won favor. Amen. She didn't just receive favor, but she won favor. What I want to say to you is that when the situation is at its worst, you have to find a way to raise your game. You have to find a way to win. It may not look positive. It may not look right. But you have to find a way to win this thing. Oh, Lord. Now, now I'm going to close. I started off by telling you, this is the last book, amen, I believe I'm right, to be accepted in the Old Testament canon. The reason is that in Esther, they don't ever mention the name of God. Not one time is it mentioned. So I'm sitting there saying, something's going on here, what is it? So I ask myself, if you move by the Holy Spirit, amen, if you're guided by the Holy Ghost, if you're inspired by the Holy Ghost, how do you write 10 chapters moved and inspired by the Holy Ghost without ever calling the name of God? Are y'all with me? Now, some of us can't even sing a song. And before we finish the first verse, we said, Jesus, Lord, amen. So we can't pray without saying, God, amen. We pray our Father. Isn't that right? Yeah. Amen. So it's hard to be moved by the Holy Ghost. I don't believe you can be moved by the Holy Ghost and not mention the name of God unless, unless God says no. <laughs> Don't mention my name. I need y'all to hear this today. Because a winner is a person who learns how to take the game and put it on his or her shoulders. A winner is a person who learns how to take responsibility for winning. Let me see if I can make this clear. There are some situations where God is not going to come down and part the Red Sea. There are some situations where God is not going to come down and shut the mouths of the lions in the den. There are some situations where God is not going into the fiery furnace. Got a problem with number 45? Let me just put it to you like it is. God ain't on the ballot on November 6th. Jesus is not running for Senate. He ain't running for the House on November the 6th. The Holy Ghost is not running for governor on November the 6th. God is saying, don't call my name, baby. God is saying, Esther, you got this. I need you to show the folk who are here at Young Missionary Temple that a little girl could bring a nation to its knees. And if a little girl could do it, God is saying, you can do it. You can elect a governor. You can elect a senator. You can elect somebody for the House of Representatives. God is saying, it's on your shoulders. You're a winner. Take the game in your hands. Learning. 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 Learning how to win again. Learning how to win again. Some people think I'm being blasphemous. He said, amen, but I just want you to know that God believes so much in us that God does like a parent. I remember teaching my little girls how to ride a bike. I got behind them and I pushed. I got behind them and I pushed. And I kept pushing. But there was a point when I let go and I stood back and I said, baby, you got it. She might have fallen. But I said, that's all right. Get up. Amen. And try again. And every time she would get up, I said, you're looking better this time than you looked the last time. You got it, baby. God is looking at you and me. And God is cheering from the sidelines. 
God is saying you may not know it, but it's in your hands. It's in your power. God is saying you can do it. You can win again.